This is 8.1 solving systems of equations by graphing and substitution. So we're using standard MA 912 AR 9.6. We need to determine whether core, uh, ordered pairs are solutions of systems of equations, solve systems of equations graphically, use the method of substitution to solve systems of equations algebraically, and use systems of equations to model and solve real life problems. So in example one, it's asking you to determine whether each ordered pair is a solution of the system of equations. So they gave us a system. The first equation is x plus y equal to 6, and the second one is 2x minus 5, y equal to negative 2. So you have two equations, and they gave us an ordered pair for part A. They want to know if this, the ordered pair works for both equations. So we're going to write our first equation, x plus y equal to 6, and I'm substituting 3 and three for both x and y. So we're saying three plus three, does that result in six? Well, six equals six, it worked for the first one. Now they wanna know, does it work for the second equation? So we're gonna write two x minus five y equal to negative two. Again, we're gonna substitute in three for the x, three for the y. 2 times 3 is 6, 5 and 3 is negative 15. We get negative 9 does not equal negative 2. So this would be a no situation on that one. Then they want you to try the second one. The next one has the equation, again, the same equation, x plus y equal to 6. Only now we're trying x, 4 and 2. So we're saying... 4 plus the 2, does that give you 6? Well, 6 equals 6. It worked for the first one. Use the second equation. 2x minus 5y equal to negative 2. Again, substitute in for x and y. So 2 times the 4 minus 5 times the 2, does that result in negative 2? 2 times the 4 is 8. Negative 5 and 2 is negative 10. And we get negative 2 equals negative 2. It worked for both, so this would be a yes statement. On example 2, they want us to solve the system of linear equations by graphing each equation and locating the point of intersection. So they gave us an equation that says x plus y equal to negative 2, 2x minus 3y equal to negative 9. So what we want to do to graph these is put both equations into y equals mx plus b form. So we're looking at the first equation, x plus y equals to negative 2. I'm subtracting x over. So we get y equals negative x minus 2. Remember, this has a coefficient of negative 1. So we have an m value of negative 1 for the slope. So I put it negative 1 over 1, which means down 1 to the right one. The b value is a negative 2, which means I start my graph at 0, negative 2. That's the first equation. And then we look at the second equation. The second equation says 2x minus 3y equal to negative 9. Again, subtract 2x over. So you get negative 3y equals negative 2x minus 9. Divide every piece by negative 3. So two negatives are going to become positive y, two negatives become positive 2 over 3 with an x, two negatives become positive 3 because 9 divided by 3 is 3. So then we see that our m value is 2 over 3, which means I go up 2, a rise of 2, a run of 3. Our b value is 3, so the order pair is 0, 3. So we have what we need to do our graph. We have a slope value here at the beginning, for the first one and a starting point, slope value of the second one and a starting point. So you're gonna take coordinate grid. Okay, so the first one starts at the order point negative 2 on the y-axis. So I put a dot at negative 2. And the slope says I'm going down 1, falling 1, going to the right one. So I did my first dot, 
my second dot and you sketch your line. Put arrows on both ends. You go to the second equation. It starts at three on the positive side. And the slope says I am rising to and going over three. Put your new dot. And sketch your line in. So there is only one point of intersection when the two lines cross each other. It doesn't mean that means they're perpendicular. It just means there's a point, one point of intersection. And this is their one point of intersection. Okay. Um, so something to remember is that our system of linear equations can have exactly one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions. So if you're looking at it graphically, for a value that has one solution, you have one point of intersection, it means you have intercrossing lines. You have two distinctive lines crossing each other. So it means that two lines are gonna intersect. It has a single point of intersection. Slopes are different. There's one solution. It's, cons it's called a consistent system or independent. If you have a two lines that coincide, it means it's the same line. It means you have the same line sitting on top of each other. So you only see one line. It means there's infinitely many solutions. Points of um, slopes are gonna be equal. There's infinite solutions. It's called a consistent system, but it's now called dependent because one is dependent on the other. If you have two lines that are parallel, This is when we have no point of intersection, slopes are equal, no solution. It's called an inconsistent independent system. The method of substitution um, entails some steps. So the first step is you're gonna solve one of the equations for one variable. Step two is you're gonna substitute the expression from step one into another equation, to, into the other equation to obtain an equation in one variable. Step three is you're gonna solve the equation from step two Step four is substitute the solution from step three into the equation from step one to find the value of the other variable. Step five is check your solution. So this example says, solve the similar equations. They gave us five X plus three Y equal to 18, two X minus five Y equal to negative one. So right now, none of them have a matching piece. So you just need to take one of them. So we're gonna rearrange the lesser of the two evils. <laughs> which would be the bottom one, the 2x, because two is easier to break down. So you're gonna solve the second one, 2x minus 5y equal to negative one for the x value. So I'm gonna add 7y. So you get 2x equals seven y minus one, and then divide everything by two. So I'm just gonna put it all over two. So I'm gonna say that x is the same as seven y minus one over two. I am going to take my new equation and substitute it back into the first equation. So you are going to write down the first equation, which is 5x minus uh, 5x plus 3y equal to 18. And in place of x, I'm going to write what it became. It's 7y minus 1 over 2 plus 3y equals 18. Next thing you're gonna do is you are going to distribute the five to the numerator to so become 35y minus five over two plus three y equals 18. You have a fraction here. Get rid of the fraction by multiplying every piece by two. In doing so, your X's are going to cancel out. I mean, your twos are gonna cancel out in the first part and you just get 35Y minus five plus two times the three, there's your six Y equals 18 times two, there's your 36. Now we have just plain variable Y. We're gonna combine our like terms. So 35 plus six makes it 41 Y minus five equals 36. Add the five over. So you get 
41y equals 36 plus 5 is 41. Divide by 41. So y is a value of 1. Now I know what y is. I need to find what x is. And remember that first equation we changed has x equals. So we're going to say 7 times 1 minus 1 over 2. So 7 minus 1 over 2. 6 over 2 is a 3. So our x value is a 3. You have a solution point of 3 comma 1. Remember, it should always be x comma y. In example 6, it's called a no solution case. So to determine what it is, they gave us two equations, x minus 3y equal to 2, negative 2x plus 6y equal to 2. So I noticed that the first equation has x by itself, so I'm resolving this one to say x equals. So I'm going to say x minus 3y equal to 2, and I'm going to add 3y over. So now we see x equals 3y plus 2 for substitution purposes. This is what I'm going to substitute into the second equation. So now we have negative 2x plus 6y equal to 2, and I'm replacing x with what I just found. So negative two parentheses, three y plus two plus six y equal to two. We're gonna distribute. So negative two and three is negative six y, negative two and a positive two, that's negative four plus six y equal to two. Y's are on the same side, like terms. I'm short six dollars, but I found six dollars, they cancel out. And then you're left with negative four equaling two, which is not possible. So when you see something like this, this is no solutions, which means we have parallel lines. It's inconsistent, but they are independent. On example seven, it's called a many solutions case. So they gave us nine X plus three Y equal to 15. 3x plus y equals 5. So I'm using the second equation and solving for y. So I'm subtracting 3x over. So you get y is the same as negative 3x plus 5. Then you're going to take the first equation, which is 9x plus 3y equal to 15, and I'm substituting in for y. So 9x plus 3, and then parentheses, I'm writing negative 3x plus 5 equals 15. You are going to distribute. So 9x comes down. Nine, 3 times negative 3x is negative 9x. 3 times 5 is positive 15, equaling 15. When we notice our like terms, the x is 9x and negative 9x, they're going to cancel out. So you get 15 equals 15, which is a true statement. So it means this is infinite, infinitely many solutions. We are same line. We are consistent, but we are dependent. Example eight, it's a mixture problem. It says a roofing contractor buys 30 bundles of shingles and four rolls of roofing paper for $732. In a second purchase at the same prices, the contractor pays $194 for eight bundles of shingles and one roll of roofing paper. Find the price per bundle of shingles and the price per roll of roofing paper. So we first what we need to do is create a verbal model. So the first thing it says, it says 30 bundles. So I'm going to write 30 times the bundles of shingles. Plus four rolls of the roofing paper. So four times my rolls of roofing paper. Totaled $732. Then it says the second one, second purchase, same prices, paid the contract paid 194 for eight bundles. So eight times the bundles of roofing paper, I mean shingles, plus one roll of paper. So one times the roll of paper, equal to 194. So 
So we have our verbal description. So then we need to come up with labels. So I'm gonna say that the bundles of shingles is gonna be the letter X. The roofing paper is gonna be the letter Y. So we have our two setups. So bundle of shingles is X. So I'm gonna write 30 X plus, it says roofing paper is the Y. So four Y equals 732. The second one says eight times the bundles of shingles. So I'm gonna write eight X plus one roll of paper. That's my Y equals 194. So we have our two equations to a notes. To find out the price of this bundles of shingles and papers, we need to take one of our equations, which would be the second one, and solve for it. So I'm gonna rewrite this one by subtracting the 8x over. So become y equals negative 8x plus 194. That's what I'm gonna use for substitution purposes. I'm gonna take the first equation, which is 30x plus 4y equals 732. And I'm gonna substitute in for y. So we have 30x plus four times negative 8x plus 194 equals 732. So then we're gonna distribute. So we have 30x, four times negative eight, it's negative 32 with an x, four times 194, so it's 776, 776 equals 732. You're gonna combine like terms. So 30X and negative 32X is negative 2X. You're gonna subtract your 776 over. So you get negative two X equals 776 minus my 732. It's gonna give us a negative 44. You have two negatives, that's fine. So when you divide two negatives by a negative, two negatives are being canceled out. So you become positive 22. So 22 is the cost of a bundle of shingles. They wanna know the cost of a paper roll. So you have to take one of your equations. I would suggest the second equation. So 8X plus Y equals 194. We already know what X is. It is 22. So you have eight times 22. It's 176. and then subtract the 176 over. So we get Y equals 18, which is the cost of the roll of paper. On example nine, it says break even analysis. It says a small business invests $14,000 to produce a new energy bar. Each bar costs 80 cents to produce and sells for $1.50. How many bars must be sold for uh, before the business breaks even? So for this one, we need to find a um, verbal model. Remember it's saying how many bars must be sold before the it breaks even. So you need to use total cost is equal to the cost per bar times the number of bars plus your initial cost. And then the next one, because it's talking about revenue, we have total revenue is going to be equal to the price per bar. times the number of bars. So now we need to come up with our labels. So we have our verbal models as to how we're gonna go about it, but we need to come up with some labels. So total cost is gonna be C, cost 
cost per bar. They told us in the description, it's 80 cents. It says each bar costs. So that's our 80 cents. Then the number of bars is our unknown. So I'm gonna label that X. The initial cost, they told us it was invest $14,000. So that is your initial cost. Your total revenue We don't know what that is, so that's gonna be our R. And then the price per bar, what we're selling it for. They told us that we're gonna be selling it for $1.50. So we have our unit pieces. Now let's come up with our two equations. So the first equation said total cost. So we have C equals cost per bar. The bars cost 80 cents. So I'm gonna put 0 0.80. The number of bars, we don't know that's gonna be X plus the initial cost. The initial cost is what we paid to invest, which is $14,000. The second equation says total revenue. So that's gonna be our R. And it says the price per bar, well, that's $1.50. And then number of bars, we don't know, that's gonna be X. So we have our two equations. So the question says, how many bars must be sold before the business breaks even? When it breaks even, breaks even means when revenue is equivalent to cost, when the revenue equals the cost amount, that is when you break even. So we are setting up our two equations. So I'm gonna write revenue equal to cost. Our revenue equation is $1.50 with an X. Our cost equation is the 0.80x plus 14,000. So now we're solving for x. So I'm gonna subtract the 80 cents back. So you're getting 70 cents x equals 14,000. And then you're gonna divide by 70 cents. So we have 14, Thousand divided by 0.70 gives us 20,000. So X equals 20,000. So we need to sell 20,000 bars to break even.